you doing? I'm Roy Huseman from Equipment Zone, and I'm here to do a quick tutorial on how to use our new uh, face mask platens. We have a total of two of them. So I have to step off camera here for a second. We have for a square and pleated flat masks. And then we also have one for a nose bridge type of mask. Okay, so we're going to start out with the nose bridge first. We're going to go through start to finish on how to set up the F2100, as well as how to set up Garment Creator video, I mean, uh, program to import the platen uh, backgrounds that we have custom made for these that you can request when you order your platens, okay? Make sure you do request those. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to remove your platen as normal. Secondly, you wanna make sure that you remove your rear pin. Uh, there is a set screw in there that you wanna remove and I'll show you where that is at. So on the rear pin, this little area here, you have a Phillips set screw. You remove that, you can remove this. It's another thing to go ahead and do that anyway, because these spacers, when you're using different things, uh, you might need to take these out. So with this specific platen with a normal brick, okay? Then you're gonna put your handle back in and your platen adapter, drop that back down there. Now your first platen height that you're gonna be running for these face masks, okay? Depending on whether or not they're a single thickness or a double thickness, your platen height may vary between a four and five and a half, maybe a six. Uh, just keep that in mind. On this one, I'm running it at five and a half. Gonna go ahead and lock that in at five and a half. And then I'm gonna grab my platen my pins in there. Oops. So I'm going to bring the camera a little closer to me so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do as well is you want to pre-treat your masks. A uh, good way to do that was a pressurized spray bottle and just go ahead and do a whole bunch of them. You can set them all down on some parchment paper. Uh, spray them all and let them sit and start drying. Uh, you can finish drying with a heat gun or there is a platen adapter for the uh, heat press, which I can go ahead and go through with you. I just have these sitting here kind of drying out so I can remove all these masks. And I'll show you how, if you decide you want to go with a platen adapter, how easy that is. So, Underneath your platen, you have a pin. You can pull that out. It allows you to lift up this very heavy platen here. And then depending on the masks, you have two sizes you could order uh, for the adapter. So we can go ahead and just put one on there. And that enables us to do a curing for the smaller mass. If the pleats are too high or big, there may be a little bit of an issue fitting them on here. So you kind of got to work that out. Uh, or you may decide it's on some of the masks, depending on how they're designed, it may be better to do it an alternative way. So uh, these are dried and cured already. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and place this on here. And what I'm doing is I'm folding over my bridge, bringing that up, lining the crease up with the little channel there. And then you can just start pulling it down and pulling it forward. And then as you get this situated, you can get that all the way, okay? Just to make sure that's all the way forward. All right, and that's basically it. You may have to lift up this back portion again in case that doesn't completely fit. There we go. 
Now the other thing is, is that you don't have the platen adapters right now. This is another option. You can use an iron and just set your iron on there and uh, give it a 10, 20 seconds after you're uh, completely dried and cured with the pre-treat. You can use a heat gun, again, lining them up on the other platen that way I had them to start them curing. Uh, and then that way you can get back to printing and keep the production going while you're running the machine. Okay, now that I've got that completely flat, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my computer here. Can you give me a capability here? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my Garment Creator. So here's Garment Creator software, just opened it. So whatever your settings are like you normally do, uh, you do have your black color t-shirt, light color t-shirt, dark color shirt, uh, however you wanna set that up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the platen that you've requested from uh, Equipment Zone to run uh, the specific platen that you ordered. So this one's for the round platen. Uh, once I bring that in, I wanna make sure my layout is at 1620. Uh, it, the default layout is uh, 1416, by the way, so that isn't gonna be enough. Um, and you can see the platen's oversized. So you're gonna go to your 1620, and that brings you right in where you need to be. Uh, if you decide you want to add this as a default, you can hit the plus down here at the bottom and name it uh, hat platen. If you, I mean, uh, not hat platen, but your uh, face mask platen if you'd like to. Um, then I'm going to go to my settings on how I decide I want to set it up. I got it dark color t-shirt standard. So if I go to my light colored shirt, for my black color shirt, use garment black, I'm gonna automatically lose this background image. Because in order to keep it, I need to plus it or save it for each setting, okay? When you're in the process of doing that, you wanna make sure that you set it up for unidirectional as well, because these masks are completely flat. You wanna make sure that you don't have any issues with uh, fuzzy edges and this, uh, achieves a more uh, higher quality image per se. So I can go here and uh, grab whatever image that I need to grab. Uh, let's say for instance, something like that. Uh, bring it in to my layout and I can size it. Uh, this particular platen uh, is, I think a four inch might be good to fit that in there. So then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this and then I can position it within my platen area and then go back to my settings. Now on these uh, face masks, being that if they're doubled up in material, uh, there are some out there that are made more out of the docker type of material. Sorry, you're not seeing my whole uh, <clears throat> or uh, my body during this point, I'm sorry. I thought I had part of that video in here. But um, anyway, getting back to the design, most likely you're gonna need, to, gonna need to add more ink. And because these are small images, it's not that big of a deal to just run at your highest level as well. So at this point, I would just set these as my default. When I do go down here and save as my dark colored face mask, standard mode when I do that, okay? So now I can just go ahead and print this. I've already loaded it into the machine. And I'll come back and let you watch this print. Okay, and now you're seeing my shirt, obviously. So I can pull this back so you can see a better view. Okay. So 
this is ready to print. Let's go ahead and hit print. And while this is printing, I can go through quite a few of the masks, uh, things to keep in mind. Most restaurants, I know Uber, Lyft, it is a requirement not only for some passengers, but the drivers must wear face masks. So you might want to look at uh, getting involved in contacting uh, some of these uh, companies to see if you could start providing and license maybe their logos to do that. Uh, same with restaurants. So uh, all the servers and everything need to go ahead and wear face masks. So funny ones, what have you, or personalized face mask as well. Uh, you know, fast pro shop. And then also, here's an example of the pleated ones, which are a lot thicker uh, that you can also purchase. And I'm going to show you that platen in a second. Now, it's not only the pleated face mask for that platen, it is also the square face mask with no nose bridge that would fit on that square platen as well. So this is just about done printing here. Okay, so that is printed. Go ahead and pull that out of there. Very nice image. Um, so again, uh, for uh, curing this, I could either use a heat gun, I could use a specialty platen that you can order from uh, us, from either Geonite or Hoptronics. They all have the, the other platens that you can use. I can use a heat gun, or I could have just brought my iron back over here with some parchment paper and just hit it for 60 seconds if I, if I wanted to, okay? Uh, so we're gonna just set this one aside for sake of time. So I can go ahead and go to the other platen. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this platen and I'm getting ready to put this one on. This one is gonna require, because I am using the thicker material, this is very thick material with the pleated uh, to remove the spacer. Okay, so I have the black one out at uh, five, between four and a half and six for the other one. Uh, this one I'm taking the thicker white one out and putting the black one back in. And my flatten height is going to be at five and a half again for the Square platen. Go ahead with that. Five and a half. Lock that into place. Put this platen on. Okay, then I'll bring this camera over so you can see a closer view. Okay. So I'm going to lift this up. get my other face mask that I've already pressed. Now, when I put these face masks on, when I have this rubber here, that's going to push it down and hold it. I want to make sure it doesn't fan it out because you want a nice, uh, nice crisp image in there. So when I put this in there, I want to make sure I lined it up properly, obviously centered it. And then I start bringing it down and I want to hold this. Okay. And align it. And then I'm going to put my whole hand on it and just close it like that. So it's, I could see that it fanned it up a little bit right there. So I'm going to close that again and try to flatten that a little bit more and put my hand there. And that's pretty good right there. All right. So on this one, I'm going to go back to my computer here and share my screen again and show you how to go ahead and do this. So you can see right now I printed that one under dark color t-shirt standard. 
So when I go to my light colored shirt mode, I'm going to lose my platen image because I didn't save it under light colored yet. So I can go ahead here and import my other platen image again. Make sure when you order which platen you want to use that you call us and uh, make sure that we email this out to you so you can install it into your garment creator. So then I can go ahead and take that image or say I want to import something else. Um, I can go ahead and open another file. Uh, for instance, let's say uh, let me go ahead and do this. Rotate that. Change my image size. Now this platen is five and three quarters long by three and a quarter inch wide. You, you want to stay away from the edges, obviously. So I don't know if I went to five and a quarter even, which would be good, or just five inches I could do. Um, would be fine. And then go ahead and position that. Now again, on my settings, I want to make sure that I'm adding more ink on this uh, just to get a more vibrant image. I'm going to do a double strike or I'm going to add more ink in general on my color. But if I want to make my red darker since it's a single color, I can do that by increasing my contrast uh, and then just go ahead and print. And this one being on a lighter garment with no white underbase, it sends over these files almost instantly. So it's already processed through the computer and waiting for it to pop up on the printer and it's ready to go. I went ahead and hit print on that before I brought my video back. Sorry about that. I came out pretty quick. And there's the final image. I want to thank you very much uh, for your time today for tuning in to Equipment Zone and uh, setting up these platens to print in Garment Creator and on your um, F2 2100 or 2000 Epson printer. Thanks again. Bye.